Hey everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 24, which is the last episode of season 1, to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. That, that's what I was saying earlier. There's really no point in having a cell phone if it's the only one in existence. The, 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 whole, uh, like, the whole value uh, or like, the whole appeal of having a communications device is volume or the number of other devices that you can communicate with. There was no reason for Senku to do them like that. What you could have done instead is, like, instead of just building everything at once and then repeating all those actions again, why not just make two of everything as you're, like, between each of the steps? This is also, like, uh, again, uh, this is not a cell phone. What Senku has just built is a landline. Not to diminish what they've just built, because it's a very, very, like, incredible achievement. Although, like, a landline is very similar to cup phones. Which, for those of you, like, w if you were a kid and you ever decided to make one of those, you just take, like, a plastic cup, and then you poke a hole at the bottom of it, and then you tie it to a string, and then on the other end of the string, just have another cup that's attached the same way. When you talk through one of them, your voice or the, the sound that's produced from your voice will cause the string to vibrate at those frequencies and then it's behaving the same way as a landline is now. You just, you can't get as long distances, but like with a cup phone, it's, it's just the same principle that you, your voice is creating the sound vibrations that are causing the string to vibrate and when you're talking through one cup, you can hear through the other like almost perfectly. Specifically, I want to mention that when someone says cell phone, they're implying that it's wireless. Like, you would never say that, like, a phone that's attached to a wall is a cell phone, but that is what Senku has built. This is a landline, and not, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I think there's a reason, like, that the producers or the editor, whoever was responsible for this, like, they said cell phone acquired, but it, it's not. Like, I don't know why they called it that. <gasps> This has got to be a bit of an awkward situation because Senku right now is like 3,000 some years older than his dad and they're listening to a recording device that has lasted all through time. Which, but by the way, like a CD like like that, it, it will certainly last that long. Like glass does not deteriorate as quickly as other materials do. What may be more interesting about this is how the founders knew to record everything on a like pretty much vinyl. I mean, something like that. It still bothers me that when these founders had the opportunity and all the years to do it, why didn't they just go through town in like this country that they know of? And they can just go and get all the technology in the world and they can just keep building off of that. Like, I, I, I don't see why they had to start off from scratch when technology and stuff was not turned to stone. Like, they had access to all the cell phones and cars and transportation devices and communication devices and, like, food. And, I mean, they had all this stuff. Why did they feel like they had to just get rid of all of it? Mm. When you're playing from a record, it's actually a pretty simple process. Like, so Senku explained how to record onto a record, and for you to play whatever is on that recording, it's the same process, but in reverse. That little needle that's vibrating back and forth in the grooves of the record is vibrating to the same frequency as the people who initially recorded their voices onto that record. Those little vibrations only need to be amplified, which he's doing right now, for you to actually listen to whatever it was that was recorded on there. Today, in our modern era, we don't even use CDs anymore. And back when we did, like, we perfected the technology to the point where we didn't need, like, a physical needle to be reading those vibrations. All you needed to do was use a laser, and that laser can pick up all the differences and changes in those grooves of any CD, and that's how that information was transferred to the computer. <laughs> 
Ende. So sorry, sir. That is a really, really incredible TV show, man. That's like this is something really, really fun. Wow, I just, I feel like I. I mean, th this Dr. Stone project, like, uh, for, for me and the YouTube channel has been such an amazing success. And I'm, I'm so thankful to the people who kept on requesting that I make the first episode because this is, what, like, one of my new favorite TV shows. I, if anyone knows when season two is going to be airing, please tell me because I really want to watch everything as it comes out this time. What could be more impressive than the actual story of this TV show is the fact that Almost everything that they've done, technological advancements or with pharmaceuticals, has been accurate. Like, it's been very, very good. Like, as close to the real world as I've ever seen with any other movie or TV show or even, like, fun video, like, fan-made. I'm also really impressed with how this is an original story. Like, I don't, I've never heard of anyone either going back in time and recreating everything or a situation like this where everyone just turned to stone. It's, it's, I mean, I don't know, like, I, I could go on and on about how incredible this show is and just all of the technology that they talked about. It was so diverse in what Senku was doing and he got other people involved in it and it showed such an amazing progression of how we, we went from a stone world to pretty much where we are now. Like, he's, from episode one, where he was just dependent on like alcohol and like mushrooms and plants and stuff to just keep him alive. To now we have a full on hydroelectric power plant and he has a furnace and he's building like katanas and he's building like almost a cell phone or I mean it's like not cell phone but more of like a like broadcast station and he's creating all these communication devices like there was no electricity when this guy started. There's like oh man what a... Well, what an amazing show. I just, I, I can't wait for season two. And thank you guys so much for letting me make these videos. And I'm very glad that I could add value to all these things and just the production of Dr. Stone. As far as what comes after this, I have no idea. <laughs> as of right now, I don't have any videos that I'm going to make. I don't have anything on my list of things to do. So I'm gonna just, I don't know, like hopefully scroll through the comments and find what other people have been requesting. But as of right now, um, I'm free for anything. Just l let me know what you guys want to watch, like any other movies or TV shows or things like that. And I will make the next video on them and I'll share them on The Gold Life. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the Dr. Stone series. And as always, stay fresh and stay golden. What's up everybody? Welcome to The Gold Life. My name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to be watching Dr. Stone to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. This has also been the most requested like TV show or movie or anything that I watch and commentate on, so I've been looking forward to this for a while and I have no idea what any of this is about. Like, I haven't seen any sort of anime in a long time. The last one I saw was Boruto and that was just for fun, but like, to actually analyze it, I've never done something like this before, so I'm in interested to see, like, pretty much as much as you guys are, I'm interested to see, like, how accurate these things can really become. Okay, let's get started. It's in the lightning, when it struck the magnetite, it induced enough of a magnetic field that the magnetic field stayed forever. <laughs> <sighs> They're gonna die. I have very, very little faith in these gas masks. Chrome. <laughs> How exactly would Senku do that? I mean, they're like they're literally living like in the Stone Age, right? Like Doctor Stone, and there's I mean, so I, I've already accepted the fact that it's possible for these people to communicate already. Like, assuming that they speak the same language would already be a stretch. 
but let's just for the sake of conversation say that's the case when the gases from that pot are going through the cylinder like via the hose any gases that are not aqueous which means they don't dissolve in water they'll just pass through the hole whereas um, carbonic acid thankfully it is aqueous which means every little bit of carbonic acid or carbon dioxide that's leaving that pot will be caught in the water and it will be used to create the carbonated um, effect